Arfield. What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. He's on the outside. He's on the It quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Browno. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yeah! Burnley yeah! win the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Phil Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up the shot. Oh, what a goal! Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserved the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redman, head of this weekend's trip to Manchester, just down at the M66 to take on Manchester United at Old Trafford, Saturday 3pm, a game which Burnley are going to need, well, not, not to, some people are calling it a must win already, I think that's a bit much, um, but we've given ourselves a chance and we're going to need to get some points from somewhere before that final day of the season. Uh, sorry, final game of the season against Forest. Because let's be honest, Forest are probably going to beat Sheffield United. But we'll get all into that again on the full time show when we can work out the next lot of permutations. As you can see, I'm joined by an opposition fan, as always, and I'm joined by Callum from the United Road podcast and the weekly armchair. How are you doing, mate? How are you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me on, mate. No, thank you for coming on, mate. And as, and genuinely thank you as well, because it was like a last minute sort of thing. I didn't ask until yesterday, because I'll be honest, I was struggling to get some United fans on, um, which I always tend to find. I tend to struggle for the bigger clubs, because there's that many of you. I tend to find <laughs> that you're all always busy doing bits and stuff. Uh, but I, I do struggle for that. So genuinely thank you for coming on, mate. It, it means a lot. Oh, it's all right, man. I think most United fans just don't want to talk. I think they'd rather talk about anything other than Man United at the minute. That's probably why. Yeah, well, I hope you're ready for a barrage of Man United questions, mate, um, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. But just before I get started, I just want to remind you all that this episode is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch because you can wash every televised Burnley game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, the chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King pub. And let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes... Huge title showdowns, the race for European qualification and nail batting and relegation six-pointers. And don't forget to download the Green King Sport app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game on. Right then, Callum, apologies. Man United questions coming. Talk to me about your season so far. How do you feel like it's gone? Not good at all, really. I mean, I, I talk about stating the obvious, I suppose, but it's... You know, considering the third place finish in the cup last year, now I know we've obviously yeah. got to an FA Cup final, but uh, knocking Liverpool out on the way. But, you know, performances haven't been great. I think from the neutral point of view, the rival point of view, and United's own fans, including myself, tactics, performances wise, results as well, to be honest, haven't been great. Um, you know, we're currently in sixth only because obviously we won against a very poor Sheffield United team last night. Um, and Newcastle didn't win their game, so we, we went back to sixth. But we're, we're very likely to be finishing seventh, potentially even eighth, with Chelsea potentially winning two games in hand. Um, New, Newcastle are more than capable of going on a run as well. So United have got to be really careful here that they don't have an even more embarrassing end to the season. Um, look, you know, we can speak about injuries and things like that. And as much as I do have sympathy for that side of things with the club and with the team, I still think the players that play every game are better than the opposition for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, on paper anyway, to sort of turn around and see some of the games that we're getting. 
you know, Man United shouldn't be going 3 0 up against the likes of Coventry and conceding three goals to make it 3 all and a toenail off side save us and having to go to a penalty shootout. I, you know, I don't care how many players are injured, that the players on the pitch should be doing the job. Um, the manager should be setting you up and not making silly substitutions to, mm. to help. Coventry come back from three goals down. So it there's a lot of things that concern me to be honest. And this season has been almost one to forget um in terms of the league. Um in terms of the cup, they could salvage something, give us a memory of the season and obviously win a trophy and not um stop City winning a potential double. Um but it's been poor, really poor as a United standpoint. And I think it was the hope that kills you at the start of every season. You know, expectations probably weren't massive, but they were certainly a hell of yeah. a lot better than this. Um, you know, it, it says everything as a United fan at the minute that we're nervous for Burnley to come to Man United's ground because even last night, I know we won 4 2, but you know, it was 2 all. You know, it was 1 0, 1 1, 2 1, 2 all. If it wasn't for Bruno Fernandes, you know, yeah. we, could, we could have been embarrassed again last night. So, you know, it's it's things like that. Way I, I know there's no easy games in the Premier League, but again, last night was just concerning again. Um, the, the most important thing, obviously, was three points, but concerning how we got them. Yeah, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't watching it because obviously the um, the Everton uh, Liverpool Merseyside derby game was on, but I was keeping up to date with it. And I was looking at that, thinking, well, if Sheffield United can score twice against them, Coventry can score three times against them. We're now looking at this, and, and you're not necessarily run a form as such because the last two games that I mentioned you did come through, but I think you can be got at, and that's giving us as fans hope going into this game and you know players will be saying the same thing as well um, but you mentioned there obviously you did relatively well last season compared to the last few years especially compared to this year you mentioned the third place finish in the cup final as well why do you think you've regressed and gone backwards this season rather than progressing because obviously you'll, you'll have all just expected United to get better and better from it from there on in yeah do you know what I wish I could answer that question but I honestly don't know um, I think personnel wise we probably haven't got what Ten Hag exactly wants, mm. but ultimately he did have a say in some of the players that he bought, i.e. Casemiro. Um, I think the club have got a lot to answer for, obviously, in terms of the signings of Casemiro, who at 30, 30 years old at 70 million quid is bizarre. Um, mm -hmm. As much as he was good last season, there's always that element of risk and doubt that he is going to regress, considering his age. Um, Anthony, I try and, I try and not I try and draw the line somewhere where it becomes criticism or abuse, but he is not a good Man United footballer. Um, I can't, I can't understand what he offers us over the likes of Ahmad. Um, and yeah. I know people, I know myself included, probably crying out for Ahmad. You know, he's not the savior, but I just like to see him given a bit more of a chance over Anthony because it, it, it's infuriating watching him on the right side. Rashford's obviously not been informed. Hoyland obviously struggled a little bit um, in terms of receiving the ball from the wingers. Um, I just, I think, in, to, to if I really wanted to cut it down to one basic thing, I think tactics have been very strange. Um, I think the players don't have a clear cut instruction um, of what they know to do, or they do and they can't execute it because of the personnel. Um, so the club have got a lot to answer for in terms of before Ratcliffe came in for obvious reasons. I think the manager's got a lot to answer for, for obvious reasons, tactically. Um, I think the players have got a lot to ask for because I think they're a lot better than that they're showing. Um, I think this is just probably where we are at the minute. I think we're in such limbo. I know obviously everything's gone on uh, sort of above the manager and stuff. It's probably not helped, but yeah. it's it's been... Um, it's quite hard to just pinpoint, but it's like you said before, like it's almost tactics, but it's basics. Like the players can't seem to get the basics right. Like Sheffield did the basics of football right last night and scored twice. If you do that, Vincent Company is probably a talented manager. He's probably a really good championship manager. Um into and probably finding his feet in the Premier League this season. I think if he was to play as well as Burnley know he can from the championship days and probably actually go at United and get the basics right, Burnley could really give us a game. And the fact that Man United fans are even saying that is quite bizarre. Um, I think so much has gone wrong, but if I had to be honest, I think injuries and tactics have probably been the, the two main ones. 
Yeah, fair enough. That brings me on perfectly to the next question as well, because obviously there's a lot of hoo-da. Um, hoo-da, is that even the right word? Like hoo-ha is probably what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> surrounding Ten Hag, that certain fan pages and, and big, well-known Man United fans are, are criticising him. Then you've got other ones that are that are backing him as well. Seems to be there's like not not necessarily a civil war amongst Man United fans, but it's a bit of a split opinion. But I think the common consensus is now that he'll probably be leaving at the end of the season. Where do you stand on the Ten Hag stuff? Do you want him in or do you want him out? Uh, I'll back him until I have to. Yeah. Um, the the problem I have is I was very much Ten Hag in until probably six o'clock on Sunday. Um. I hate being that guy who calls for a manager to be sacked. And I still still would argue he... I still half argue he shouldn't be sacked. Because I, I, I do half think with a proper structure above him, could he actually do a job next season? Yeah. And it's his last year of his contract. So is it fair to give him that last season to see how he'd do and how he'd perform? However, performances have been poor for a while now. I'd argue probably since the end of last season. Yeah. Really poor. And some of the glaringly obvious basic issues that we're seeing on the pitch don't seem to be being addressed, like cutbacks, um, shots faced every game. Um, midfielders don't seem to know whether to press or to stay back. The gaps in between defence and midfield, because the defence is so low, yet the midfield and the forward line so far forward, seems a little bit... It seems so basic to address, and it seems like the manager isn't addressing it. Why? I don't know. So... My, my my feeling is I'll back him always because I'm a Man United fan and I'm I'm never going to be the person who calls for his head because I want to be right. If if I was to call for his head, I'd want to be proven wrong. Yeah. So I'll back him until I have to. However, I do think Ineos, speaking from their point of view, I think Ineos will see these performances and I think the writing's on the wall. I personally think they've already made the mind up. I think he will be gone in the summer um, yeah. because people are saying about the FA Cup, if we win that, Ten Hag will stay. Well, one, Van Hal didn't. Two, Man United's new owners don't seem to want to mess around. I think they will be basing their decision wholly on what they see in every game on a game-to-game -game basis, what are the performance is like, they'll look at all the data and on the, the analysis, they'll look at everything surrounding results, mm -hmm. performance, manager, player atmosphere, fan atmosphere, and they'll take it all into account and go, because this summer is effectively a fresh start for United almost. It's a brand new reset. And I know we've said a lot about rebuilds over the last 10, 11 years, but this truly probably is one because of a new ownership structure and a new football structure being implemented that we haven't seen before until, well, since Ferguson left. And even that, that was just Ferguson. But nowadays, that's unheard of to see some kind of structure like that where the manager really does run the whole club. So I would argue the writing's on the wall for him. And I will, if, if, he, if he stays, I'll back him. If he doesn't stay, a League Cup, a third-place finish, wherever in the league, and, and two FA Cup finals is no mean feat. I think he can be proud of that um, because many other managers have come in, tried and failed as well. Um, I think he'd be remembered fairly OK. Um, but ultimately, I think the issues we're seeing have gone on for too long now. And I think it's not the fact that the fans will think that. I think it's the fact that Ineos will think that. And that is what will cause... After Sunday, I think that... Caught... I hate agreeing with Jamie Carragher, but I think he was right. I think that performance on Sunday cost him his job. Yeah. You can't be 3-0 up against a championship team and then concede three. That's just not good enough. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think it's just a natural time for it to end. And like you said, with, with the new ownership and, and Ratcliffe and that and Ineos coming in, I, I just feel like it, it will be the just everything will just align to be like, right, thank you, off you pop, we'll get somebody else in. Um, but that obviously brings a question in like, who next? Because the Southgate links, I'm sure you can't be happy with. So what's Jesus the Christ. situation? Yeah, I, I was talking to a Man United fan at work and I was like, well, Surely it's not going to be him. That'd be a ridiculous point. They were like, why? He's done okay. And I'm like, surely not, mate. You don't want him. But I think most United fans don't want Southgate. So who next for Man United? Who would you want to come in? Well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, alluding to Van Hal before, Van Hal probably lost his job because Jose was right there to get. Um, and he was kind of such an obvious choice to bring Mourinho in instead. Mm. Um, obviously, because I think it was short-term success. There was trophies almost guaranteed with Mourinho. Um, to a certain extent, especially at that time anyway. So um, it, there's not really an obvious choice. Nagelsmann was probably a lot of people's number one choice, but he's now just signed an extension with Germany. So he's he's gone. Southgate, good God, I'd honestly, I'd rather absolutely 
anybody else than Southgate. <laughs> the reason why England haven't won a trophy in the past few tournaments is because I of agree. him. Um, if you get, if, if in all services, if you're going to bring Southgate, and I'd rather you bring Solskjaer back because Solskjaer did Solskjaer's job at Man United was so underrated, and he gets so much stick from fans, which I find bizarre. Solskjaer did a yeah. very good job at Man United, um, but. This is the thing. This is why I'm like, do we just give Ten Hag his final year and see if he can work under the structure? Because there isn't an obvious choice out there. Um, looks like Potter's going to Ajax. Um, now, Potter was probably limped because of the Dan Ashworth thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I do understand that. I think Potter's a good coach. Whether he's a Man United coach, I don't know. Um, if I was to probably pick anybody, and this is me just speaking a bit out loud, well, thinking out loud, I don't know tactically how good he'd be in terms of and how well he'd work under a structure um but if Tuchel does leave Bayern I think he could be an option um I think he did really well at Chelsea obviously won a Champions League he did he's done okay at Bayern probably could have done a little better did really well at PSG did really well at Dortmund um I think with the proper structure he could potentially be okay um but other than that I don't really know that's not me saying I want Tuchel either it's just out of the options that I can think of, he's probably the best one. Um, which is why I think, do we just keep Tan Hag? I'm so undecided, to be honest. If I was to, if someone was to put a gun to me, I'd probably go Tuchel, but yeah, um, only because I don't think, uh, I just don't think Tan Hag has has the backing now. I think he's probably lost it, and I think they're just getting to the end of the season. Um, so, just to say, anybody probably Tuchel, Tuchel or Solskjaer back. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Interesting to see who does come in then if Ten Hag does leave. I just want to um, focus everyone's attention to the bottom of the screen. You can see the names of our YouTube channel members scrolling along the bottom. Big shout out to every single one of them. Thank you for supporting the channel. We really do appreciate it. If you want to join the YouTube channel members, then there is a link in the description and a little button that just says join underneath. Uh, you click that, you get stuff like early release and things like that and, and more coming next season. I'll probably release a few things over the next few days actually um but then mainly some stuff for next season um we're going to be doing more shows more of them on early some of them on on for members only so thank you to everybody who does that now um we've mentioned Ineos already and stuff um so i do just want to quickly ask how you're feeling because like you said it feel like it's a natural reset for united this this summer and I, i agree i feel like with the new ownership new manager it's going to be a completely different United team next year. You might ha- actually have an identity. I don't feel like you've had one of them for a while. Obviously, if new new manager comes in, new owners comes in. I feel like Burnley have, have got an identity. And to be fair, we had one on the dice, but it's a different one. So it is possible to create one. Obviously, Burnley can create one. United can create one. Are you excited for the future? Um, or are you a little bit worried? I think looking back over the last 10 years or so and, and the Glazers and, and their ownership, you probably would be leaning more towards excited. Oh, I'm I'm a lot more excited um, than I have been over the last decade because it, it seems like football is actually being put first. It looks like the stadium's finally being put first. The only mm. slight inkling I've got is the Glazers are still there in some capacity. Yeah. However, to sort of counterpoint that, I actually think the Glazers will be gone in the next two, three years. I don't think a shrewd, clever businessman like Jim Ratcliffe would spend what he spend if he's not going to have some kind of guarantees that he's not going to have full ownership of the club over the next few years. Um, so it doesn't worry me too much. I just am aware that they're still sort of there in the background that little bit. Um, but when you see that they've come in, it, you know, Mike Keegan from the Daily Mail's put, put an article out today saying that, um, you know, Old Trafford is now, new plans are very much under the way. On, on the way. Um, I'm undecided on the on whether, well, that, sorry, they're undecided on whether it'll be a new stadium or if they're going to just completely renovate, but it looks like there's plans in place for either or. Um, Omar Barad is coming in from City, who's got an incredible reputation. Um, obviously, Dan Ashworth, when he comes in, I don't know, but it looks like that's fairly nailed on to happen at some point. Um, Jason yeah. Wilcox is coming in. Um, is it Jean-Claude Blanc is coming in as CEO? It looks like there's a, a genuine football structure coming in and there's more to come in as well. It looks like the players that we're being linked with it seems finally we're being linked with players that can play one position and actually fit a style of play within that position. The likes of your Elise's, your Eze's from Crystal Palace, um, you know, Tadebe or Tadebo, sorry, from uh, Nice. You know, there's players out there that aren't hundred million pound players, but are a lot more affordable and 
cheaper and then to turn them into superstars where it just seems to be a marketing exercise over the last 11 years so if you're gonna if you, speaking about Ineos you know and, and Ratcliffe's a Man United fan as well he's from he's from Manchester mm-hmm. I think he's from Middleton you know he's he cares about the club and I think he's kind of one of us and it, I, someone that can run a marathon in four and a half hours and then turn up to Wembley and sit next to Avram Glazer for two hours <laughs> yeah. always has my admiration so um it's really really exciting like genuinely and I think United have got United fans have got um, a reason to be excited. I think there's still issues surrounding some things around the club in terms of tickets and stuff like that. I think there's been a bit of an issue with that, um, with the new system there. But um, that's something hopefully must in the fan forums and 1958 and Varia and TRA can all sort out. But in terms of on the pitch, footballing-wise, football structure-wise, ownership structure-wise, it seems to definitely be heading in the right direction. There's no reason to not be excited at this point. Yeah, fair enough. Well, fingers crossed for you for the next couple of seasons. Hopefully, we'll be in the same league. Um, but um, let's turn our attentions to the weekend then. Um, you've mentioned injuries already. United, it's been quite well documented. You've got quite a few. I think everybody's been through that phase at some point in during the season. Um, we definitely did to, towards the end of December, January, I think it was. We do seem to be coming out the other side of it now. Um, but is there any any new injuries or, or, or big suspensions that, that we need to know about ahead of the weekend? I think Marcus Rashford might have a knock I've seen, but I'm not sure how legitimate that source was that I saw. As far as I'm aware, it looks like, um, so I've just got it up here. I mean, we're looking at Marshall, Evans, Martinez, obviously Shaw. It looks mm-hmm. like Rashford is still out. Mount um, will be out again. Um, Varane, uh, Malassia and Lindelof. So it looks like there's no new ones. It looks like Rashford probably will be out. Uh, the, the problem I'm finding, though, with the, the sort of injuries is, and as, as much as I do believe everyone goes through it, I think what United are going through is almost unprecedented. And I think that the frustration for me is the players that are injured are players that are repeatedly injured. Mason mm. Mount barely kicked a ball for us after spending £60 million. The medical team seems to be bringing him back when he's clearly not ready. Same with Martinez. Um, Molassi has been out basically all season. Rashford keeps getting little niggles and knocks. Um, Varane has just been the same since we since we signed him, um, mm. which is probably the reason why I think many would probably not be too bothered if he went, just because of the wages he's on. Um, I think he's a great, great defender, Varane, but, you know, you, your best ability is availability, and if if you're um, if you're never available, then it's kind of an issue. Um, yeah. So it looks like there's no new injuries, but my, my, my concern is, obviously, you are trying to fight to stay in the league. Um, looking at the table, you are three points from safety. Now, I know your goal difference is quite a lot quite um quite a lot less than Nottingham Forest, but yeah, you know, he's our he's our fighting and I know it seems like fixtures, I, I don't know how bad your fixtures are, but you know, like I say, Sheffield United got the basics right against United. And unfortunately they gave us a game. Now I'd I'd argue very much so that he's definitely better than Sheffield United. Um looking at sort of a lot of stats, you probably around where you should be in a lot of this sort of stats across many, many, many things. You're like 17th to 19th in, in the, in the standings for them. Like in things like your, um, see so clean sheets, your 18th expected goals, your 19th goals conceded mm-hmm. per match, your 18th. So table wise, you're probably where you should be, but at the end of the season, this always happens with relegation, relegating fighting teams, you know, obviously Everton have probably pulled away now. So it looks like it's going to be yourselves, Luton or Forest to go down. Um, so it's kind of that time of the season where anyone will beat anyone because that that extra gear comes into focus to try and stay in the league. So yeah. this isn't an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. You'd like to expect United should be able to turn you over. But again, Sheffield United didn't get turned over and we, we seem to struggle against them for an hour. So I'd be, I'd be slightly nervous, but that's just because of the nature of who I support at the minute and how frustrating they are. But I certainly think we should be okay. Um, but in terms of injuries and things, I don't think there's any new ones. I mean, that's a shame. I was hoping Bruno Fernandes might have picked up a slight niggle that would just have him out for the one game because he's probably the player that worries me the most. He just always seems to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and, and get United over the line. His his injury his injury record is probably the best I've ever seen in mm. just career wise, not United. I think in the I think in his career, I think he's missed about four games through injury. I think one was through suspension and three was through injury. One was a cold or a really bad illness. Another one yeah. was a slight calf strain. I think he's missed one game at United for injury. Like, and I don't even know if it's an injury. It might have been a suspension. So his his availability, like he, the fact that he gets stick from certain people online, 
is incredible. Um, I don't want to allude to who because I don't want to give them the satisfaction, but the fact that he gets such hideous abuse sometimes when I really fear for Man United and this club and my club if he wasn't signed because mm. he's the guy that's kept us ticking. And I, I get a little bit frustrated with the likes of sort of Roy Keane and Gary Neville when they give him such stick. He is the only player in our team who is captain material, I'd argue. He's clear. He's, he's captain material. He leads by example. He carries the burden and the weight of and, and the pressure that United have had this season on his shoulders because he's the captain. You know, his comments after games and before games are captain worthy. And I just think, it's like Roy Keane said on the overlap about, oh, well, what's he won? So what? Harry Kane's won nothing in his career. Is he not a good player? You know, mm. Mateo Kovacic has won five Champions Leagues. Who would you rather have, Kovacic or Fernandez? Like, I just think those arguments are really basic and boring and a little bit without substance. I just think it's really like hearsay and clickbait, and I think it's really out of order sometimes. So, you know, it's it's such a silly argument. Oh, he's not won anything. Well, neither's Harry Kane, but every club in the world would have him up front. You know, yeah. Mateo Kovacic, as good as he is, just using him as an example, great midfield, but he's not better than Bruno Fernandez. Yeah, he's won everything. So it's. It's just a little bit silly, I think, it, and it comes without substance. But I'd, to be honest, I'd be more, I'd be very surprised if Bruno was ever injured. Never mind if injured just for this weekend. Yeah, he's he's a very good midfielder, and I know a lot of people don't like him and stuff. And I think he's he's just a case of if he was at your club, you'd love him. It's the same kind of similar thing to to Ashley Barnes. Everybody loved to hate him, but he's at your club, you absolutely love him. Um, yeah, it's the, the clickbaity thing as well. I, I agree with you on that. There are some aspects to his game that I don't like, but I'll never sit here behind the screen and start shouting and screaming about it. And I think that's probably part of the reason why we only have three and a half thousand subs. I think a lot of it is clickbaity stuff these days, and that's why the likes of Roy Keane and, uh, and stuff do what they do. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I just think in terms of punditry analysis, I don't think Roy Keane's the best, but in terms of entertainment and sort of mm. um, value he adds to these shows, he is brilliant. And it's probably the same. He is right sometimes. I just think when, um, to be fair, maybe it's because he cares about United more. So I, you know, maybe it's because he cares about United. Because obviously, he was, he, he, I think he was a fan as well, and I think he obviously he obviously played for us for so long. But so I, I do sort of see the, the idea of why they are so harsh on United players. I just think it's a little bit needless sometimes from the likes of Neville and, and Roy Keane because Roy Keane's my favourite of a Man United player and my hero. But and it so it pains me to criticise him really, but. I never think he would say something for clickbait. I just think he, I just think it's a little bit harsh what he says. Um, there is certainly many, 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 many people out there who use clickbait, um, and I, I, I get it. Sometimes it's sometimes it using the right way can really drive traffic and, and engagement to your channel. I think when you are saying "f off Rashford," you know it's not really great or. Or um, Mason back, exclamation mark. Mm. It's not great. It's very clickbaity. Yeah. Um, it's clickbaity. Um, I just think it's wrong. And unfortunately, that, that today's media and today's journalism and today's YouTube and today's whatever has sort of led it to that because of the way Twitter is now. And obviously, the more engagement you get, the more money you get and all that sort of stuff. I do understand it. I just think these channels have a level and a duty of care to people especially when they've got such followings that they should be slightly wary about what they say because yeah. what they say holds weight and that weight can really be thrown in the wrong ways um, and it's not it's not really fair. So I think there's nothing wrong with clickbait. I just think do it on the right way and you're fine. Um, but because in terms of this channel, this channel is really great and, I, and in, terms, in terms of Burnley, in terms of the size of the football club and the sponsorship from Green King, it's really good for you. But... It is a shame that proper channels with proper fans, with proper structure, with you know, with all this that you do, it's a shame it's not yeah. more recognised. I think sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one to toot me on all, but I do agree. I, d I do feel like the channel is a very good channel. I think some of the stuff that holds me back though is the size of the club, not just the fact that I don't do clickbaity stuff as well. I do think that the fact that Burnley are, are a small club doesn't help. Do, um, do you know? Do you know what though? Just to interject there, I really like that though because as without being disrespectful to Burnley, you aren't probably a big club in terms of obviously your United, your mm. your Arsenal's things like that. So you are right in terms of it limiting you, but you've also not you've also stayed very true to yourself in terms of you support Burnley. So I'm going to do what I want to do because I support yeah. this club 
and it doesn't really matter to me about the subs. It, it matters about mm. talking football about the club. So I think it's quite ad- admirable because you definitely see a lot of people online who quite clearly don't support particular clubs, but they use it because they know it's it's there for them to make more money kind of thing. Yeah, I agree with that. No names mentioned, but I do agree with that. But um, big shout out to Green King for that. The sponsorship does help because obviously the subs are never going to be massive, but also Uphold as well. And I just want to remind you all that Uphold have now launched a limited edition Burnley Uphold card, giving fans a chance to show their support home and away. The card is free and comes with a host of benefits, including the ability to spend in any currency anywhere in the world where MasterCard is accepted with no foreign transaction fees, competitive exchange rates and easy integration with Google or Apple Pay. Get your card today at www.uphold.com slash Burnley FC. But that's not all. When fans use their card for the first time, Uphold will donate £5 to Burnley FC in the community, supporting the Burnley family both on and off the pitch. Numbers are limited. So again, visit www.uphold.com Burnley FC uh, slash Burnley FC, sorry, and get your card today. And a shout out to JJ Watt, by the way. Speaking of uh, Burnley FC in the community, he donated £50,000 to Burnley FC in the community that they, they announced today. So big shout out to JJ. The invitation has been asked to JJ several times for him to come on the show, by the way, but I'm yet to have an answer. So fingers crossed we get that at some point over the summer or next year. You should probably just DM him. Everybody DM him now. No, I'm only joking. Don't pester him. He probably won't, won't want to come on. Um, but uh, Cal, and back to them football. You mentioned earlier United fans are nervous for Burnley, and you said it yourself, they're nervous for the Burnley game. Um, you said you'd say we probably are better than Sheffield United. I mean, we definitely are. We put nine past them this season, uh, and I could go, we, we, we beat them 9 1. Um, yes, didn't yeah, realize uh, for, for the week obviously Saturday we're beating 4 1, 5 0 at the turf. Um, so we were looking at that thinking we can get it, United. Like, we, we probably. I think it'll be a case of we'll put up a good fight, but eventually go down to United. Um, I think that that's the case it will be at the weekend. But we're only lost the one game in seven. We've finally found our form at the minute. We're on a decent run of form. The only game we lost was a silly mistake from our goalkeeper. We should have had another win in there if it wasn't a silly mistake for the goalkeeper. Uh, so you mentioned nervous for Burnley. Are you nervous because of our upturn, upturn in form? The fact that you're labouring towards the end of the season now or a mixture of both? Probably a mixture of both, to be honest. I mean, I, I had um, I had a look at your fixtures sort of the last sort of five, six, seven games. Mm. Two all against Chelsea. Now, Chelsea are a, a really strange team this season, but two all away to Chelsea is always a, a decent result, I think, especially when you're fighting at that end of the table. 1-1 one, one against Wolves, 1-1 one, one against Brighton, which the... Uh, it was was it M- M- Moritz, Murich, however Murich, you say it. Murich, yeah, the keeper mistake. We should have won that. Really, really bad. Should have really won the Wolves game. game. Yeah, that's what I mean. So th- that's where it comes down to like little bits and moments in matches, luck, moments and performances. You know, you've, you've just taught there three games effectively where, you know, instead of one point, you should have, or two points, you should have ended up with six. That would have put yeah. you, I think that would have put you what level on points with Forrest or potentially just out of the relegation zone. So out, yeah. it's it's probably a mixture of both. I think in terms of your upturning results, I think that's what I'm saying before. When you are fighting at that end of the table at this stage of the season, you kind of don't know what kind of performance you're going to get from the teams. They will certainly give it their all because they want to stay in the league, um, which is why I was quite... I, Sheffield United, weirdly, was probably the one club I didn't expect to do as well as they did last night because... With the greatest respect to them, they are utter trash, to be honest. They're dead. I think um, they're dead and buried now. I think that were part of it. Yeah. I just thought, we've got no to play for now. We're playing for Brian. Yeah, exactly. So I was quite surprised. But whereas Burnley are very much still in the in the hunt to stay in the league, um, I think United will probably have that little added extra, especially from the fan perspective, that obviously company um, manages you. But I, I really that. wouldn't take them lightly because, like I say, this stage of the season with four games left, every point is going to matter now. And... I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if he's got a draw against us. I really wouldn't. Mm. And because it was a stage when we played Burnley, wasn't it? Um, we just seemed to always struggle against you, especially at Turf Moor. There was always a 1 0 win uh, for Burnley, I, I feel like. And it was always was like, it, oh, there was that I Robbie Blake one there. in 2009, weren't there? There was that Robbie Blake one in 2009, our first yeah, ever Premier League home game. Yeah, and then he came back up a, a couple of seasons later, and I'm sure he's did it again. So, um, and then it's just, I've always found Burnley really frustrating because I felt like they've always given United a game and always been trounced by City. Um, yeah, there was, was something, there was something in the way City played under Dyche. I say under Dyche, it's the same this year, to be fair. But under Dyche, they would always, always smash us. Because like, we'd have the low block 
And most teams have struggled to break us down, United included. But then City are just ping it into top bins three times and then and then we'd have to yeah, open up a little bit and they just pick us off. Yeah, it was it was always really bizarre because I, I felt like when it, talking of fantasy league, it was always a case of if City were playing Burnley, I'd captain Harland every time because it was always mm. a case of they'd score. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably a mix of both. I think your slight upturn in form, um, the fact that I think, I'm just trying to think, in the last five you've picked up what? Out of fifteen points, she's picked up six points. You know, it's not, and you've only lost one nil to Everton. You easily could have picked something up there as well. So, um, you know, six points in 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 five games for a relegation team is it's every point matters, and you yeah. know, it, it's probably enough to start getting you to get that hope and belief. With United's form and performances at the minute, you can easily go and hit 15, 20 shots against us. Um, will O'Nana's confidence be slightly battered from his mistake last night? You know, it's, it's it's just all these little things that you can think of that. Do you know what they could get? At, could really get at us, and it's the last thing we want. I'll be honest, but I I really wouldn't put it past Burnley to to nick a result against us. I, I really hope you don't, but I, I really think you could do. Well. I'll do. I'll, we can let's do a deal then. You let us nick a result here if we beat Newcastle because we've got to play Newcastle yet for you, mate. So fingers crossed yeah. we can get something well, there, and that'll do you a favour. Annoyingly, to be fair, he's playing Newcastle and then Tottenham, and yeah, uh, you know, about six weeks ago, I'd have said if he's going to take points off them, then because we'll get fifth or fourth. But good God, we're we're, we're absolutely nowhere nowhere near the top five now. So I, I've kind of resigned to that now. So. Um, I just don't want Newcastle to finish above us because I feel like that would be a proper end of embarrassment to the end of the season because obviously we were sixth for so long and all of a sudden now seventh, eighth and ninth have started catching us up. Like I say, Chelsea yeah. two games in hand. If they go beat and win both of them, we go to seventh. Newcastle are very capable of going on a, on a good run as well. So it could put, you know, it potentially put us in eighth. If West Ham pick up a couple of good results as well. It puts us in ninth. Like that's our lowest Premier League finish ever, I believe. Like, Awful, awful, awful season. And this is why I'm saying I should never be going, oh, Old Trafford, Man United, Burnley, it's easy. But I just don't know what team's going to turn up in terms of from your side and our side. And that's the yeah. that's the main issue. I agree with that. I thought you were just going to mention about United, not knowing which United are going to turn up. I'm going to say, and I don't know which Burnley are going to turn up. I know we're going to be better than what we were 15 weeks ago, but then you think about the the game at Sheffield United, or it's Sheffield United, but everything was perfect. We played Chelsea, we played very well down there, but in the middle of that, we've got this horror show at Everton where we offered absolutely nothing and the goalkeeper made another error as well. So, fingers crossed, we're on it. Fingers crossed we get at you. I think we can get at you, but can we get three points? I'm not sure. I think, like I said already, I'm going to... I'm I'm gonna what's the word contradict myself immediately because I'm, I'm I'm gonna predict a draw um, just just because I want to predict a draw just because I think if I predict it who knows I might manifest it but I think ultimately I think we'll 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 have a good game potentially maybe even take the lead give a really good account of ourselves and then something will happen like Bruno Fernandez just with a, a brilliant piece of quality, a dodgy refereeing decision, or more likely a, a mistake from one of our defenders or the goalkeeper, that'll get you back in it. And then you'll ultimately just turn the screw on us. I'm going to predict a draw, though. I'm going to predict 1-1. It's, it's bizarre because looking at this, we've got yourselves, Tottenham, Newcastle, Forest. Now, Forest, like you mentioned already, we're three points off Forest and we have to play Forest on the final day. But our goal difference is so bad, we're effectively four points off them. So we need to be within two points of Forest on the final day. Now, if we get a draw and they lose every single game, then happy days will be within two points. But they've got to play Sheffield United. We've all seen how bad Sheffield United are. So I'm looking at the four games and thinking, out of the two away games, this is the easiest one to get points on. So we're going to probably get trounced at Spurs. But then we've got Newcastle in between as well. Newcastle are weird. that They've had a weird season. I don't know if Newcastle's going to turn mm. up. So I'm looking at this game and thinking... A point here, a win at home to Newcastle, get spanked by Spurs, beat Forrest on the final day. Hopefully, Forrest have lost at Sheffield United, or even if they haven't, um, we will still be within two points of them because of that. We need to be within two points of them. So I'm going for a draw because we need it. And even if we just went and beat Newcastle at home, if they beat Sheffield United like they're expected to, that won't be enough. That won't be enough going into the final day. What are your thoughts on it, mate? Yeah, I, I mean, in terms of relegation fight, I think you, you're absolutely right. I think you need to be within two points on that last day because then it's in both of your hands. Whoever wins effectively stays in the league. Um, I don't even think it's the Sheffield United game that Forrest will win. I think <laughs> I think it's the Chelsea one. I think I think 
Chelsea are so up and down. I think City will batter Forest at the weekend. I think Forest will likely win or draw against Sheffield United. Um, but I could see Sheffield United helping his out. Um, I think Chelsea will capitulate and I think it'll be the Chelsea game because it's the last home game as well for Forest as well. So I think if they mm. can go and win that and stay in the league in front of the home fans, it'll give them that extra edge. To be honest, mate, you're not going to want to hear it, but I actually think Burnley are going to go down. Um, I, I do agree with you. I, I think we've left it too little too late. I think yeah, this run I, of form, we've shown that we probably are good enough to compete now. Now we've finally settled on a team that works and companies finally learn from all these mistakes. But we're too far behind by the time that happened. And let's not forget, Forest have had points deducted and solve Everton, so we should have been dead and buried already, to be fair. That's, yeah, how, that's I mean, how poor we've been up until the last seven games. It's a weird one as well, really, because Luton are, are sort of probably in a similar situation, aren't they? But, I mean, if you if you look at the league table, effectively, Everton are, now, um, Everton are pretty much safe. I'd be very surprised yeah. if something happened with them now. Um, these are only three points off, but again, Luton are also fighting the same fight as well, so... I think Sheffield United and Burnley are probably um, going down. I think it'll be between Luton and Forest, and I've not seen Luton's last fixtures. As long as you are within two points of that safety position, you know, it's kind of all or nothing for that that game. Yeah. Um, I think what Burnley need to do effectively now is just focus on themselves and not look at results around them. Go and try and do something to United and shock them. Um beat Forest yeah. on the last day and just see what happens with the other games. Um if I was to if I was a betting man and I was to say three would go down, I'd say the three in the in the in the drop zone now. Um just because I I don't actually remember the last time that happened. The three teams that come up went straight back down. But um in terms of the in terms of the sort of points deductions, I do feel a little bit for Everton and Forest, speaking as a United fan. You know, when a certain club has got so many charges against them, and it seems to be taking so long, it is it is slightly a shame for them. And I can I really do feel for their fans in terms of wow, we've been punished so quickly. Now I get there's a difference between um, I get there's a difference between one charge or two charges to one hundred and fifteen. Yeah. Um, but they must be looking at it going, wow, that is it seems a little bit strange, especially when they were so accommodating to the league as well, which City aren't doing so. Um, I think if Burnley just focus on their own games now and just try and pick up as many points as possible. I think if you pick up two wins out of your last four, you'll stay up. It's just where those two wins come from. I think you should beat Forest, really, at home at Turf Moor. But I think Nottingham Forest against Chelsea will be the game that potentially relegates you because I think Forest could beat them. I think it just yeah. depends on what Chelsea team turns up. Yeah, I agree. I I, I do think they win, but... I... As I'm, I'm getting in my head that they will win, whether it's Sheffield United or Chelsea. I think they get an extra three points between now and the end of the season, which means we need four points between now and then. Hopefully, we get one or three at the weekend. Uh, who knows? We could, we could end up winning three out of the last four. Which, considering what we've won five all season, I think it is now, would be some turnaround. Um, but I think that's what we need to do to 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 stay up. And, and you mentioned Luton already. Their, their fixtures are probably the easiest. Wolves away, Everton at home, West Ham away, and Fulham at home. I don't actually mention Luton just because I'm not looking at them. I'm looking at Forest because they're the team that yeah. we currently need to catch. That will potentially change the weekend um, if you know uh, Forest gets spanked as we're expecting him to and Luton win. But anyway, mate, we'll wrap it up there because um, I know you're a busy man. I've got to get to work as well. I need to set off within the next 45 minutes. But before we do, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and your podcast and YouTube channel if they want to digest some United content for the weekend? Yeah, so you can obviously follow me on Twitter at underscore Callum Stone. I tend to moan about Man United and the Tories. Um, obviously, my podcast is on the Weekly Armchair YouTube channel called The United Road. It's um, every Tuesday night. Uh, I've got Adam Joseph on, on Tuesday. Um, probably at a little bit of a later time on Tuesday just because he's in Australia. So he's going to be up very early to do it for me. So thank you to him. Um, but yeah, Twitter, uh, the Weekly Armchair YouTube channel every Tuesday night for the United Road podcast. Uh, some really good guests have been on it. Hopefully some more really good guests coming on as well. Um, but yeah, that is me. Um, feel free to follow me um, if you want to. Feel free to tune in and subscribe to us um, and like all the videos and all that jazz. Yeah, I fully recommend it. Some good channels there, some good lads as well. Um, and I do appreciate you coming on, Callum, like I said earlier. Um, anytime, but, yeah, mate, anytime. We'll, 
we'll uh, we'll end it there. Good luck for the rest of the season. I, I genuinely hope you, you get into the top six or top seven, whatever it is you want to do. I've never bought into this everyone should hate Man United thing. I'm more of a everyone should hate Liverpool guy, which I'm sure you can get on board. Good with. lad. Um, Matt, so... I knew I came on this podcast for a reason. <laughs> so good luck for the rest of the season, mate, just after Saturday. Yeah, nice one, mate. Appreciate it. And good luck to yourselves. I'm sure you will... Um, I think you will give a good go. I really do. I think, to be honest, I think I, I think Luton have a slightly better chance just because, like you say, the, the fixtures are a bit yeah. easier. Um, but again, you know, you wouldn't usually say Forrest could beat Chelsea. And uh, amazingly, I think that could happen. So I, I think there's still another couple of twists to come yet in that relegation. Yeah. And it's always, it always makes for entertainment with the, uh, when you're not a fan of one of those teams. So um, good luck to you and... I, I, I look forward to seeing what twists come, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. There's going to be some more twists and turns. Hopefully, they're in Burnley's favour. But thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you for the fan reactions after the game and then the full-time show. Hopefully, Neil and Sam are back. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath, everybody, though. Hopefully, Liam's back. You, you probably can hold your breath on that one. I think Liam will be back. But, yeah, I'll get a team together. I always do. But thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we will see you next time.